Hello, my name is Dr. Carlo Oger. I am a board certified emergency physician. And in this patient education video, I'm gonna to talk to you about viral meningitis. Meningitis is an inflammation or infection of the meninges. The meninges is the lining or covering layers of the brain and spinal cord. Meningitis can be caused by multiple different viruses, medications, and even bacterial infection. The symptoms of viral meningitis will be very similar to those of bacterial meningitis and those of meningitis caused by medications. Symptoms will include headache, fever, uh, and sometimes a stiff neck. But also, uh, it can be preceded by other signs and symptoms of infection, like an upper respiratory infection, cold, congestion, runny nose, sometimes sore throat, sometimes nausea and vomiting, uh, an influenza-like illness or any other kind of viral syndrome that then presents with a predominantly severe headache that's associated with neck stiffness, and you'll see the patient doing something like this, or uh, photophobia, where the patient um, gets really irritated with light, uh, sonophobia, where noises seem very loud and very irritated. How would the doctor diagnose meningitis? Well, the doctor who's seeing you will do a history, will do a physical exam, and if he thinks there's a chance you have meningitis, he will have to do other tests to differentiate viral from uh, bacterial meningitis. The most definitive test he will perform is a lumbar puncture or spinal tap. The spinal tap is a test where he puts a needle, a very thin small needle, into your lower spine and introduces it to draw fluid from your brain and spinal cord called the cerebrospinal fluid or CSF. When he collects this fluid, he'll send it down to the laboratory to be tested for proteins, for white cells, a culture for bacteria, and a gram stain where they will look under a microscope to see if there's bacteria in that fluid. Of course, if there's bacteria, they will diagnose bacterial meningitis. If there's no bacteria, but there's a high number of proteins and white cells, he will diagnose viral meningitis. But this won't tell him the subclass or very specific kind of meningitis that you have. For example, there's many hundred types of viral um, meningitis, sometimes caused by uh, mosquito bite type injuries, flu-like illness and influenza, or herpes simplex encephalitis and meningitis, which is caused by the herpes simplex virus. And there's other kinds of meningitis and encephalitis. Encephalitis is the term used to indicate brain infection, which is not just the meninges, but also the brain tissue itself, can be caused by Japanese encephalitis, by equine encephalitis, uh, and other mosquito-borne illness, even tick-borne illness that can cause meningitis as well. Your doctor will decide to test for this very specific kind of meningitis if you have a travel history, if there's been an outbreak of this specific type of meningitis in the area you live or the area that you visited. But he will have to have a high index of suspicion to be able to test for these types of meningitis. In my own practice years ago, when I thought a patient had viral meningitis, um, I would sometimes not even do the test of lumbar puncture because the treatment for meningitis rest, IV fluid hydration, pain medication, and just observation alone. However, due to a personal experience with encephalitis, which again is a worse form of meningitis, I found out that it could be so much more severe than what I thought would be just viral meningitis. Uh, the the long-term side effects of an untreated or a meningitis that goes into encephalitis that causes brain inflammation can be devastating with problems with memory, concentration, labile mood, even seizures. Therefore, nowadays, when I see a patient that I think might have meningitis, I perform the lumbar puncture, I do the appropriate test, I test for HSV or herpes simplex encephalitis and, uh, and 
I admit the patient for observation pain medication and let another doctor decide what other tests need to be also done on this patient. In addition to doing a blood count, to doing electrolytes, to doing IV fluids, pain medication and doing the lumbar puncture, the patient might also need a CT scan or MRI, again, to rule out other forms of viral meningitis or the involvement of the brain tissue or encephalitis in this particular patient. When should you go to the doctor? If you identify with any of the series of symptoms we described here, you should seek medical attention right away. If you or your loved one have a headache and a fever and a sore neck, not, not necessarily stiff, but especially if there's any altermentation, confusion, trouble with um, remembering stuff, trouble with texting, you should definitely go to the emergency department right away. And you should definitely insist that the appropriate test be done like imaging and a lumbar puncture. If you have viral meningitis, you most likely will be admitted to the hospital for treatment and further testing. If you have been diagnosed with viral meningitis but discharged home, that's fine. You will follow the instructions as directed, but if you develop any of the symptoms of confusion, altermentation, seizures, uh, the headache's getting worse rather than better, um, then you should return to the emergency department for further evaluation and treatment. I hope you enjoyed this video education on viral meningitis. For other videos like this video, please go to patienteducation.video where me, Dr. Carlo Oger, a board certified emergency physician, will try to explain that condition, treatment, follow-up related to that specific complaint. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.